Let's talk about our democracy for a minute. <laughs> but let's do it in a way that makes the snowflakes' heads explode. Let me be clear before this podcast begins. We are loud, loud proud, proud, and do not give a fuck. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Real and raw political and social commentary. The freedom to oppress the rights of other people is not liberty, you shit-eating moron. Ah, the smell of freedom of speech. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast, and this is Tony Michaels. Hey, Tony, fuck them. The Republicans are in disarray. Actually, you know what? That's offensive. That's offensive to the word disarray. <laughs> oh, my God. In the Senate, in the House, uh, if in, up in New York in a courtroom, you couldn't get any better. You couldn't get any better than this. What a, what a great day. What a great day in American politics. Oh, man. Just fantastic. That new The new wiener of the House believes... That the CBO score, he says, he says, uh, only in Washington where we cut spending, does it increase the deficit? Yeah. What a fucking idiot. Yeah. When you, when you make sure that a bunch of billionaire tax cheats don't have to pay their taxes to, I don't know, the internal revenue service, like the department where they collect fucking money. Yeah, you're not going to collect as much fucking money, dum dum, which is going to add to the what do they call that? What what do they call what do they call that? Oh yeah, the deficit. What a bunch of fucking boneheads! And then they're fighting in the Senate. That's right, they're fighting in the Senate. Even Lindsey Graham understands how much of a fucking bonehead Tommy Tuberville is. Yesterday they were trying to get they're trying to get one by one nominations and now Tommy Tuberville is stopping the one by one nominations which is fantastic. Keep going. Marjorie Taylor Greene is beefing with Chip Roy in the house. She's like, "Yeah, January 6th was an insurrection." I mean, that's basically what she's saying because she's saying pro-Palestinian protest were an insurrection. And she's saying, "Well, you called January 6th an insurrection, so this is an insurrection." So you're admitting then Marjorie Taylor Greene that January 6th was a insurrection. Oh, that's talk about fucking running into the truth full speed. <laughs> oh my God. These people never stop, but you shouldn't want them to put down their shovel yet. Not yet. Hell no. When they're digging their political grave, order a backo for these dumb sons of bitches. Honestly. I mean, what what better image do we need going into the general election next year? Not just not just the presidential election. That one's going to be fucking easy. As long as we do our jobs, we're going to slam dunk that son of a bitch, aren't we? God damn. But we got the Senate. We got the House to contend with. We got state governorships. We got state state houses and state senates that we got to win back. We got to make some headway here. And you know what? When the Republicans are just standing there digging their political grave, we should not stop them. We should let them keep going. This is what they want to do, folks. 
They want authoritarianism. They want fascism. Show the fucking world what, what it is that these fucking idiots want. Just do it. Just show it to them. Stop fucking coddling them and protecting them from the world seeing who they really are. Let them fucking see it. Tommy Tuberville is a piece of fucking trash. And Alabama should be goddamn ashamed of themselves that that guy is represents them at all, not even just as a United States senator at all. They should act like he never coached a football team in anywhere in fucking Alabama. By the way, the guy didn't even live in fucking Alabama. Did you know that? He lives in fucking Florida or some shit. Guy like Josh Holly in Missouri. Which I showed the video yesterday of Josh Holly just after getting getting ripped to shreds by Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas. And he went and bragged about it. Talking about how he, he torched Mayorkas who in the hearing explained to Josh Hawley that his mother was a Holocaust survivor and all of her relatives were cooked in ovens by the Nazis. And Josh Hawley is out bragging about it on social media and Fox News. Fuck that piece of shit. What a fucking prick. What a goddamn little cunt Josh Hawley is. And I can't wait until we we can, I don't know, maybe show some... <laughs> Uh, some footage of him getting caught by his wife watching a certain type of porn. Just saying. You know, the kind that Josh Hawley thinks doesn't make you manly. You know what I'm talking about? But the all these are wedges. All these are political wedges. And it's the reason why their party is absolute trash and shit and it's dead. They can't even manage, they can't even manage to cut off the, the cancerous fucking sludge that is the Trump family. These people are going to have to testify in open court. Yesterday, Donald Trump Jr., I guess, he couldn't recall. I can't recall. I don't know anything about accounting. I just signed things. I had no idea what I was doing. These people claim to be really smart fucking business people and so intelligent and, oh, my God, they're so great at this and all this shit, but he can't even fucking recall what business decisions he was making? Come on, man. Are we really supposed to believe this shit? And Eric Trump's supposed to get, get up on the stand today, I guess. Boy, you talking about a lot of fucking gumming in the courtroom today. We're going to see a lot of gums. In the courtroom today, I guess. I got a little bit of footage and some photos uh, from the courtroom. So we're going to go into that. Oh, yeah. And by the way, remember how they were so, the Republicans, I showed you uh, last Friday on Bonehead of the Week. Because George Santos made the Bonehead of the Week because the Republicans were going to expel him. Remember that? Uh, they didn't. <laughs> oh, my God. You need a two-thirds vote. Uh, in the house to expel someone. Two thirds is what you need to expel someone. I mean, it's kind of difficult for the body of the House of Representatives to expel one of their members because you got to get a consensus. You know, it's got to be two thirds. But they couldn't even get a simple majority. They need George Santos. They need that lying son of a bitch. They need that crooked motherfucker. They need him. I mean, goddamn, he's one of the best Republicans they got. If you think about it, really, I mean, he's one of the best they got. He's one of the best goddamn liars, shamelessly, doesn't give a fuck. And he steals money from his constituents and his donors. Goddamn, he's like the best Republican that there is. He's one of the greatest at the game. Really, actually, they should put him in the Republican Hall of Fame, if you think about it. George Santos is like the best of the best of the Republicans. I mean, as far as, you know, their criteria matters grifting, stealing their fucking constituents' money, lying to people. <laughs> that's all That's all on brand for fucking Republicans. And, and, and he wears, he wears weird-ass fleeces underneath his suit coats. There's all kinds of fucking weird points that George Santos gets in the Hall of Fame of the GQP, of the um, Real America First Nazi Party. Like, he gets all kinds of points. He should be, he should definitely be on the Hall of Fame ballot for the Republican Party Hall of Fame. I'm just saying. What do you want from me? I told you, I told you months and months and months ago when everyone was calling for George Santos to resign, I was like, hail to the no. 
Why do you want George Santos to resign? This is going to be fucking fantastic to watch these idiots play around while they try to explain to us why they want to keep George Santos. Guess what? I was correct. Who gives a shit? George Santos is out next year anyways. That district is going to fucking dunk him in the trash. He won't even be the Republican nominee. He'll get primary and he'll be gone. Who gives a fuck if he ain't jail by then? That fucking criminal stealing, stealing his his constituents credit card numbers and racking up personal bills. That's some wild shit. Right. But I mean, is it really? Is it? I mean, if they're going to expel, if they're going to expel George Santos for doing that kind of shit to his to his donors and his constituents, why? Then why would they support Donald Trump? It's kind of like Chip Roy going, hey, Marjorie Taylor Green." You can't call the pro-Palestinian protest an insurrection because then they're correct about the January 6th insurrection, that it is an insurrection. You can't can't say that shit out loud. That's why they're in a beef. The Petty Yeti. The House Squatch on this morning. <laughs> the wiener of the house. He has no clue what he walked into, does he? Oh, what a fucking idiot. Mike Johnson. Micro Johnson. Little wiener. He is. He's got little wiener energy, too, that guy. Oh, fuck. I couldn't be happier that they picked this motherfucker. Oh, f- he is such a dumb son of a bitch. He clearly he clearly does not know how the house how the house works. He clearly is not he is not fit to fucking lead. He's already in trouble when he's being accosted in the hallway talking about how the CBO scored his spending cuts, and he doesn't understand how that adds to the deficit. Bravo. Bravo, Republicans. You picked the perfect guy. The perfect guy. The perfect guy for the to represent Republicans. You fascist, white Christian nationalist piece of shit. It's perfect. Why, why wouldn't they pick someone who would represent them truly? You know, their stupidity, their dumb fuckery. I mean, this guy only thinks the earth is like 6,000 years old or some shit. Believes that we should set laws by the Bible, right? This is their guy. This is who they want. He wants to ban all women's health care. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's uh, best buddies with Tommy Tuberville. Not wanting the military at all. I know, I know, I know he doesn't want the IRS looking into his rich donors. I wonder if um, Harlan Hitler has made a phone call to the new wiener of the house. What do you think? Do you think Harlan Hitler, the guy who's got the signed Mein Kampf um, copy in his home in Texas, the billionaire, you think he's already made a couple phone calls? He's like, hey, man, remember those uh, remember those IRS agents that are going to come after us rich people? Why don't you try to get rid of those? Fuck the, fuck the Israeli funding. I mean, if you got to, you know, get people to vote for it for that, yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, the guy who wrote the book that I like to brag about, he fucking hated Jewish people. Oh, man, you should read that book that he wrote. God damn. I mean, he said a lot of, a lot of horrific things. And he lied a lot. He demonized Jewish people a lot in that book. But, you know, if you got to tie the funding to this to the Israeli aid for them, oh, man, if you could get us a sweet deal to make sure that we don't have to pay the taxes that we owe, that would be magnificent. And that's what that's what the fucking wiener of the house is doing. Apparently, they're going to bring a bill to the floor. I think Democrats should fucking vote no. Fuck you. Fuck you. That's what they should say. Fuck you. Yeah, I know it's a difficult position for a lot of uh, members that in Congress that are Jewish, but fuck that shit. What the extortion? Are you kidding me? We're we're gonna we're gonna play this extortion measure with fucking billionaire the money that billionaires owe already, folks. They owe the fucking money. The only thing that the funding does that Mike Johnson wants to cut is pay for the IRS to go get the fucking money. It costs money to go deal with these rich son of a bitches. All they do is hire rooms full of lawyers, fucking tie you up in court and cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, as a matter of fact. But it's worth it because they owe hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes that they're not paying that they owe. So fuck them. Go. Yeah, that's worth it. 
I think all all the Democratic members in the House should vote no. Fuck them. Fuck them. I don't give a shit what your religion, what your background. You don't need to be extorted, holding a gun to your head so that billionaires can cheat on their fucking taxes. Fuck you. And the American people get shit on. Oh, my God. It's the same motherfuckers that are complaining about the UAW deal that they made with the big three. Oh, man, they really screwed over those big corporations, didn't they? The workers, they're so fucking greedy. Really? I don't see the I don't see the UAW forcing the fucking Speaker of the House to make sure their benefits are tied to Israeli funding. Do you? What a bunch of fucking scumbags. As if we got any other reason to hate fucking rich people in this country anymore. God damn. Actually, you know what? As a matter of fact, let's just tax them into oblivion so they're not rich anymore. Then we don't have to fucking hate them as much. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. I use the word hate. I mean, man, it's it's going around. It's a tough fucking situation when you got to describe how you feel about these, these cockroaches. Calling calling UAW labor labor union members the people who work on the fucking factory line who actually do fucking manual labor demonizing them, but then the speaker of the house is gonna protect billionaires, a bunch of fucking tax cheats who owe money to us, the government. Us, it's us, motherfuckers. They owe us money. It's our fucking money. Not theirs. It's our fucking money. We we hired our representatives to go to Washington to make the fucking rules and the laws. One of them is the tax code. We did that. We sent them there. And they're trying to cheat on the tax code so that they keep our fucking money. It's ours. They get to use our fucking infrastructure. They get to use this fucking country. We, we spend gazillions of fucking dollars on DOD to protect those motherfuckers business interests all around the fucking world. And the best we get, the best we get is, oh, well, that UAW deal, boy, it's a bunch of bullshit. Oh, hey, by the way, get us those fucking, get us those fucking tax cheats. We want to be able to cheat on our taxes, Mike Johnson. It's literally what's going on. And MAGA's got their heads so far up their fucking ass. They think it's the opposite. Oh, Trump's. Oh, Trump's. He's he's such a victim. Oh my God. I can't believe how 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 they treat him. Get the fuck out of here. He wouldn't fucking spit on you if you were burning alive. You dumb son of a bitch. I had some asshole on Twitter coming. <laughs> Come in my comments talking about how I don't know rural America. He says, I'm from Kearney, Missouri. Let me give you, let me give you an idea about where I'm from. I'm from the fucking Ozark Mountains, the, the northern Ozark Mountains near Lake of the Ozarks, right? That's why I sound how I sound. And oh, by the way, it's Halloween. People don't like how I say Halloween, apparently. Well, I don't give a fuck. You know where the door is at. <laughs> if you don't like how I talk, I don't give a shit. Not one, not two fucks, not even one. But he was talking about how I was from the inbred part of Missouri. And that may be true. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. That, whoo, baby, there's some towns where I'm from. Some of those small towns that eh, there might be a little inbreeding. But he's from Kearney, Missouri. He claimed he's from rural Missouri and he lacks Trump. He's from Kearney which is 10,000 people. Now, to some of you, 10,000 people, you're like, that's a small town, Tony. It's, and trust me, it's not a small town. That's not a fucking small town, okay? I'm from a place that would be considered a small town, but it's really not even that small of a town. There's almost 5,000 people there. Half of what is in Kearney. And Kearney is a fucking, <laughs> is in Kansas City, just on the outskirts of Kansas City. He's like fucking half an hour away from the city. And this motherfucker is going to lecture me on rural Missouri. Get the fuck out of here, man. Listen, I, I, I know I grew up there. I is one. Okay. Fucking bonehead. But that's how these people are. They can't pluck their heads out of their asses. And they won't. Because they can't be wrong, right? That's the one thing that the fash can't do. These white Christian nationalists, that's why they're so dug in. 
right? Their heels are dug in. It's affiliation. We talked about it before, but it's more deep seated than just the affiliation to the Republican Party. It's more the affiliation to their lies, right? You know what I mean? You catch my drift. You smell what I'm stepping in, right? You've met these motherfuckers. You talk to them. You know that they know they're wrong. You know that they know they're full of shit, right? But they can't admit it. Because if they admitted they were wrong about Trump, they have to be wrong about everything else, right? Because he allowed them to be the worst version of themselves. That's what they love about him most. It isn't that he's smart or he's a great business person. That's all a bunch of bullshit. Everyone knows that guy's a fucking buffoon. And when he handed over his business to his fucking son, Don Jr., a trustee of his business, and Don Jr. has to say, I don't recall, I don't recall, I don't recall. I don't make financial decisions with, uh, on the business that I'm the, the trustee of. As if we're supposed to believe that shit. So it's either one or the other. They're either lying sacks of shit or they don't know business. Shit from Shinola, really. And that's probably the case. That they really don't know shit from Shinola. That they are always run by corrupt motherfuckers. And they, they encourage the corruption. They encourage the fraud. They encourage the lying. That's the fucking truth. But MAGA can't see that. MAGA doesn't want to see that. That's why you have Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and Chip Roy beefing in the house. That's why you have Speaker Mike Johnson, who doesn't even know the world is a little older than a couple thousand years. You have people in, in the Senate, like Lindsey Graham, that fucking scumbag, Lady G, scumbagging on Tommy Tuberville, just coming to the re realization that what Tommy Tuberville is doing is really fucking despicable and vile. And it really doesn't look like he supports the military and veterans or anyone. America's safety at all. Huh. I wonder who's paying Tommy Tuberville, by the way. Speaking of that, who do you think's paying that motherfucker? Who do you think it is? I don't know. Someone's got to be paying him, right? Tommy Tuberville's not smart enough to stand on any principle. Have you ever heard him talk? Have you ever heard him talk about this shit? This guy's a fucking idiot. I can't even believe, I can't even believe they considered him a good football coach. That's how ridiculous this guy is. How he moved up in the ranks in football. I have no idea. And I don't really know much about Tommy Tuberville's football career, but I, I, if he did play football, he got hit a few, few too many times on the old fucking cronium. Skull crushers, right? But even Lindsey Graham can't stand the son of a bitch and what he's doing because he knows it's vile and despicable. I Hell, even Mitch McConnell knows that these fuckers abandoning Ukraine, the democracy of Ukraine, only giving Putin more, more grasp on autocracy in the world and smashing democracy. Even Mitch McConnell, even glitchy Mitchy knows that that's fucking detrimental, not just to our democracy, but democracies all around the world, which hurt us in the long run. When you're undermining the idea that democracy is good. Shit, they got these fucking idiots brainwashed. I'm going to get 100 comments for the shorts on this video just today. This isn't a democracy. It's a republic. That kind of shit. But on it goes. So don't take the fucking shovel out of their hands. And really, honestly, let's encourage them to get a backhoe. Maybe get a D8. You know what I mean? Really fucking dig that grave for the Republican Party. I mean, that son of a bitch is dead. We just need to get it buried. It's about goddamn time we bury it. And, you know, they're doing a fantastic bang-up job of doing it themselves. Just like you're doing a bang-up job of coming here every single weekday Oh my gosh, you guys are here every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And let me tell you something, I want to uh, give an announcement here. Uh, the first orders for this Machine Kills Fascist, the Tattoo Merch Design, the Tattoo Merch Collection, the Tony Michaels Collection, those first orders are being shipped. So all of you that ordered some of the merch out there. You can go to the TonyMichaels.com if you want to catch 
the This Machine Kills Fascist, the Tattoo Merch Collection. That's right. I'm going to get this microphone tattooed on my arm and that phrase tattooed on my arm. And it'll, it'll be inspired by this design. I think we're going to spread this design throughout the, uh, the Tony Michaels universe. But all your merch is on the way. Even some of those, uh, even My Dog Hates Ted Cruz shirts and hoodies are on their way. I know a lot of people have ordered those. So if you ordered, it's on the way. Speaking of on the way, we're on the way to getting a book club started over on Discord. It's free to join. You just go to thetonymichaels.com. That's right. You go to thetonymichaels.com. You can read The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday and get in on the book club. They're also going to be listening to Rachel Maddow's audio book and having conversations about that. So they're not just going to be reading books. They're going to be listening uh, to audio which is kind of cool. They'll be streaming audio in there. You guys can listen and have discussions um, in Discord. So make sure to go to thetonymichaels.com. Let me show you where to go here. So you just go to thetonymichaels.com, hit subscribe at the top of the page, pan on down. Here's your merch. You can get the tattoo merch here. You can get the My Dog Hates Ted merch here. Then you pan on down to memberships. You can see the book club is right here, right here, the third one in the memberships column. Um, you can also join Patreon for free now. I want to thank everyone. Uh, there's been, uh, I think, almost 150 of you go and join Patreon for free. Uh, now, you you only get access to a few things if you join for free, but you can follow me over there. I'll put any news over there. Um, I, I've been posting the articles that we generate with I, Tony or AI, Tony uh, over there on Patreon. I've been usually doing one or two a day. I want to get to where I'm doing multiple a day. We just have to get the, you know, kind of the the groove down and uh, we'll, we'll be posting more and more articles on more and more news stories over there uh, being generated with I, Tony. So it it seems as if I'm writing them, but it's actually the the machine, the machine, get the love machine. Uh, uh, uh. It don't work for nobody but you. You like that? You like the love machine, the love machine. So uh, go join. <laughs> Go, go look at the love machine over there on Patreon. It's free to join. Uh, and I made those articles for free because I kind of asked people if we should make those articles available to everyone. And they said yes, resoundingly. Um, so the Patreon members really wanted all of you to have access to those articles uh, and not cost you anything. Now, you can join as a member. I don't want to discourage you. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can join as a member for Patreon. Come join us on Sunday Rants. Uh, if you want to join the $20 tier, that gets you into the producer's corner on Discord every Monday and Friday morning, an hour before the show. So tomorrow morning, we'll be doing a producer's corner. We just kind of gather up an hour before the show. and We kind of talk to each other. You guys can come up on stage. You can talk. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a Twitter space, if you want to know the honest truth, if you've ever been in one of those. It's just telephone is all it is. We just kind of talk to each other. We throw, we never know what we're going to talk about. It's not recorded or anything like that. It's just a conversation that we're having before the show. We talk about all the news stories that's out there. We talk about the week in general. We talk about some of the stories that they think are important. Uh, and they want to get my opinion on certain things. And sometimes I'm looking for their opinion, your guys' opinion, and you to come up on stage and tell me what your opinion is of certain things. And people tell stories in there and everything. The producer's corner is a... It's a great place to hang out on Monday and Friday morning, an hour before the show. So again, go to the TonyMichaels.com. You can click here. Just get, you can join Patreon free for here. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can look at those tiers. Also, the book club is free to join. You will have to join the Discord. And I know some people out there don't like the Discord, but I'm telling you, you're going to love this book club thing. Even if you don't like the, the rest of the Discord, because there's a lot of stuff in Discord. We're building like a town over there. It's like a digital fuck em town. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff in there. There's an arcade. We're getting an arcade going. Uh, there's a book club now. Um, so there's all kinds of, th th there's a lot of information about voting. Uh, I know Mighty Librarian put a thing in there where you can get notifications uh, on election, election information. So you can actually go to the Discord, join the book club, and get notifications about the election, about elections. So go again to the TonyMichaels.com, click on the book club. And go go check out Rachel Maddow's audio book discussion. And, and also, uh, you can check out The Obstacle is the Way is the first book they're going to read by Ryan Holiday in the book club. Uh, sponsored by the Library of Democracy. Oh, boy. We got a lot of clips to watch today. A lot, especially of speaker, the speaker, Micro Johnson, the wiener of the house. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. 
We'll be right back. Mark, 60 seconds. This is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Are you numb and alone after storming the Capitol? Have you been left out in the cold after stealing Nancy Pelosi's mail? Do you feel exposed to a government that doesn't share your patriotic values? If any of these describe you, then you're in luck. Hi, I'm Paul Gosar, and thanks to my new product, Pardon Blanket, I've got you covered. Pardon Blanket specifically works to make you feel safe and cozy after your involvement on January 6th. And if you're one of the other members of Congress who also helped with the attempted coup, Pardon Blanket will protect you too. Pardon Blanket is made of a sort of soft fleece and a layer of sheep's wool. And they're 100% made in the USA. Don't delay and get your pardon blanket today for just $99.99. Actual pardons not guaranteed. Jumping back into it, this is the Tony Michaels Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for sticking around through the break. Why we got a lot of news stories to get to. And it all has to do with Republican business. Almost every single one of them. They can't govern. They can't manage to testify in court without discriminating themselves. I don't recall. I don't recall what my criminal daddy told me to do. <laughs> oh, holy fuck. These fucking people. Now, we got some uh, images. Speaking of the courtroom, we got some images from the courtroom. So we're going to we're gonna play those uh, here real quick. Uh, let's see. Here is uh, Eric Eric Trump outside the uh, courtroom this morning. He Look, he's got five fingers. That looks pretty fucking real, doesn't it? I'm not going to lie. Is that real or is that AI? God damn, rat. These are getting more and more real. Is it real or is it AI? Now, I know we keep harping on this AI stuff and is it real or is it AI, but this is important because holy shit, this stuff is uh, going to come down um, the pike. <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, I have a. Uh, I have some uh, images from the house as well. Um, the house squatch, the petty Yeti, the Yeti of the house. Uh, she's getting ready for battle with Chip Roy and the Republicans. So here is here's Marjorie Taylor Green, Marjorie Hooffoot Green, the petty Yeti, the house squatch. <laughs> I don't know. Can you tell if that's real or is that a, that looks real to me? I'm not going to lie. Here's another one. That fucking looks real to me. That looks fucking real to me. Done it to you? That looks exactly like Marjorie Taylor Green on a good day. <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna have a lot of images today. I want to go to uh, some of the clips though here in the courtroom. Here, I think this was uh, this is from this morning. Now, now Don Jr. testified yesterday, but he hasn't quite uh, finished. I think he's supposed to testify today, and Eric Trump is supposed to take the stand too. Here is Don. Here's Donnie in court with people within the Trump organization about the valuation of properties uh, or deals made, but he never knew those numbers were actually going to be reflected on official documents. So that's what we expect testimony to pick up, getting into the more nitty gritty of financial documents with Don Jr. Now, we don't expect the defense to ask Don Jr. any questions. So Do you like the zooming? Watch the zooming. It feels like the cameraman's on coke too. Either that or it's just like, you know, residual from this guy, like secondhand Coke. <laughs> He's got a secondhand Coke buzz uh, just from standing this close to Don Jr. I mean, Alina Habba looks like she's a little stoned too. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if they're doing Adderall or cocaine before this, but whoa, shit. But here, watch the zooming effect. Documents with Don Jr. Now, we don't expect the defense Ooh. to ask Don Jr. any questions. So after that, his brother, who is also in the courthouse, but not in. Uh, Karen says they look so uncomfy. Yeah, they should be uncomfortable. Fuck those motherfuckers. They should be uncomfortable. Sons of bitches. Look at him. Looks like he shit his diaper or something. Um, let's keep let's keep going. See what else they say about the Booger Sugar Jr. here. In the courtroom, will then take the stand. And the questions might be even more pointed uh, to Eric Trump because his name has actually been invoked by a number of witnesses in this trial so far uh, when it comes to the valuation of properties, uh, particularly in New York and the Trump's golf course properties. Now, uh, the Ty Ross points out here oh, Haben Jr. definitely had a few bumps before this. Oh, yeah. They were fucking oh, bumps of everything, too. It wasn't just one thing. 
who God knows how much drugs they did before they got in this son bitch. You know, you know they're you know they're coked out of their minds. Now, why is it important that these two people within the Trump organization? Look at that! Look at that at the very end. That zoom, Urr, zoom, rah! Look at that, rah! Cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. Can I get a? I don't know. Can I get a video of that? Ah, cocaine. <laughs> this fucking guy. Look at him. Look at him. Dude, he's 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 had to have aged 14 years in the last two months. Either that or that is cocaine. I don't know. He looks, man, he looks like shit, doesn't he? Whew. God damn. That's what going broke will do to you. $250 million. Oh, some bitch. All right. Well, there's Don Jr. in court. Let's see if we can get some images of him in court here. Let's see what we got. No, here he is. Yeah, here he is on his bender. <laughs> oh, he's so it's so funny when he doesn't recall, isn't it? It's so funny when he doesn't recall Don Jr. Because <laughs> apparently that's all he could do yesterday is he couldn't recall. I can't recall. I can't recall that we even have a business, to be quite honest with you. I mean, we go around and we brag about this business and how great this business is. And I've done interviews about how great this business is. But today, sitting here in court where we're going to be held accountable, I really can't recall. You remember Marjorie Taylor Greene doing that shit? You remember that? I can't recall. 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 Now, this is a civil trial. Um, so the problem with him not recalling or even taking the fifth, because when you don't recall, you're basically, you're basically exercising your Fifth Amendment right because you're saying something to answer a question without self-incriminating. Do you know what I mean? Right. So this I don't recall shit is going to come back to bite him. And the reason why is because the judge is already this. This is civil. This is not criminal. There does not have to be beyond a reasonable doubt. And honestly, the judge has already decided that, yes, it is fraud. You guys committed fraud. This is just a matter of like, oh, how much and how much money is it going to cost you? So this do not recall shit is only to protect him from criminal charges because you know when he's like, I don't recall, I don't recall, I don't recall. They don't recall the crime. Right? They do not recall the crime is what he doesn't recall. Here, he thinks it's really funny or he's just coked out of his mind. Here's another picture. I don't know, are these real or are these AI? You decide. I know it feels like these aren't that great, like, these are like, you're like, no, the Tony, this is obviously AI. Yeah, it's obviously AI today, like right now in this moment. But I'm telling you, six months from now, two years from now, there'll be a video of Don Jr. like the one I showed you from the courtroom that'll look fucking real and it won't be. Uh, here's um, here's six-fingered Eric uh, going to testify. Apparently, Eric Trump is going to take the uh, going to take the stand today. Here's uh, six-fingered Eric. Uh, taking the stand. I don't know. Maybe he has six fingers. These people are, these people are fucking, you know, cockroaches. So it wouldn't be surprising if they have an extra, an extra appendage somewhere. <laughs> oh my God. It, I, I love the, I love that it even has the water bottle. I wonder if that's Trump water. You remember Trump ice? Remember that video with Sylvester Stallone talking about Trump ice? Oh fuck. We got Oh man, we got to play that shit. Hang on a second. Now that we now that we're here, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do goofing on Trump ice. Um, Sylvester Sylvester Stallone was on Billy Bush's show uh, one time, and Billy Bush was trying to get him. Let's see, I think it's on my Instagram, maybe. Um, <laughs> Billy Bush was trying to get him to try waters and tell him which water was which. You know, like oh, this is this is Dasani, and this is uh, you know whatever brand of water. And there's one in particular that Sylvester Stallone, um, <laughs> he drinks out of, and it's hilarious uh, because it's his reaction. Uh, let me let me find that. I, I know it feels like that doesn't matter, but it's funny and it's hilarious. And I like to goof on these son of a bitches. So we're going to go play this video of Sylvester Stallone tasting water. That's what we're going to do if I can find it. Yeah, it's going to take me a minute, but we're going to do it. Uh, because we properly goof 
here on the Tony Michaels podcast. That's how we do this. Maybe. <laughs> oh, it's such a good video. So the, the thing is with this trial in New York, as Eric and Don Jr. Uh, testify, they're actually on the hook for this, right? It's because they were trustees in this business. And really, honestly, a lot of the fucking blame is being is being dumped on Eric. Uh, and that's one reason why is because he's a dumb dumb. Right? He, it's easy to dump dump that sort of shit on the dumb dumb. Because Eric, I, I mean, you know, Don Jr. stupid. And Ivanka pretends to be smart. And I say pretends on purpose. But Eric really truly is dumb as dog shit. And he was willing to take the heat for these idiots. And that's the, you know, the moral of the story here is that not only has Donald Trump duped his entire cult, he duped banks, he duped accounting firms to do his bidding here. He did all this shit. All this shit he did. And he even duped his fucking family to where his family has to sit and his family has to. His family. Is fam is this oh yeah here it is. Uh, uh thank thank you thank you thank you rat. Rat's got rats rats uh, doing a great job here at the show. Thank you, Rat. He found he found the Sylvester Stallone tape from me for me. This is great. This is great. This is from 2007, folks. That's how long ago this was. Now remember it, so put it in that context. This is from 2007. Okay. Well, let's let's show here what rat found here uh, on on the interwebs. Let's listen. That's the better water. Are you serious? And guess who the other water is? Whatever it is, I wouldn't wash my socks in this. <laughs> now I can't wait to tell you what it is. What? Trump ice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Donald, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I didn't know. I love Donald. I'm sorry. Sylvester loves Donald. You want to watch it again? Oh, I want to watch it three times. So again, this is Billy Bush right here. This is the guy. This is the pussy grabbing guy on the on the bus. If you're not familiar, this is Access Hollywood, right? This is when Trump was part of Access Hollywood, and they love to sell that fucking idiot on Access Hollywood, right? And that, this is Billy Bush. He's the one that was on the on the bus with Trump when he was talking about grabbing grabbing women by the, oh they just they let you do it grab women by the pussy they let you do it. You remember that? You remember the pussy grabbing video? Billy Bush was the one that was on. He lost his job at Access Hollywood over that tape. Donald Trump became the president of the United States. And Billy Bush lost his fucking job. But this is this is Billy Bush here doing an interview with Sylvester Stallone. Sly, as they call him. Rocky. And they're testing waters. And Sly is testing waters here. So catch. He's, he's trying to guess which water is which. Um, but listen to what he says about the one water. Listen what, real close. That's the better water. Are you serious? And guess who the other water is? Whatever it is, I wouldn't wash my socks in this. <laughs> Whatever it is, I wouldn't wash my socks in this. Now, this is before he knows um, what the water is. And watch his reaction. <laughs> now I can't wait to tell you what it is. What? Trump ice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Donald, I'm sorry. Oh. This video never gets old. It never gets old. It never gets old because this is Trump, the story of his life. This is the hundred percent the story of his fucking life. Is that he can't he can't even make he can't even make a water he can't even white label a water worth a fuck. You know what I mean? Because that's what he does. Now, thank you, thank you, Rant, for the um, thank you for the for the clip. Um, it's really truly what he does. Is he white labels all this shit? Like the water that he has, the Trump ice. He didn't actually open up a fucking bottling factory or some shit. He went to a company and said, hey, you make water. Will you slap my label on it? And they're like, yeah, they're like what kind of water you want? He's like the shittiest water you can get. I want it to be the cheapest fucking garbage that you can get. Put it in a nice bottle, put a nice label on it, and I'll sell that shit as if it's gold. And it's the truth because Sylvester Stallone's like, I wouldn't even wash my socks and I can't even believe I took a drink of that shit. I wouldn't even wash my socks in it. 
is what is what Sylvester Stallone says before he knew that it was Trump. Now, if he knew it was Trump water, he'd have been he would have, oh, he would have bullshit. Oh, he would have been so foolish. He'd be like, this is the greatest water I've ever had in my life. Because remember, this is 2007 when Trump was the darling of Access Hollywood. You know, when he was on NBC's The Apprentice. When NBC propped that stupid son of a bitch up and put it in the minds of people, the delusional idea that somehow he's a good business person. Even when they were showing on Access Hollywood that he couldn't even white label a water worth a shit. I bet the guy never even took a sip of that water before he slapped his fucking name on it. He just said, give me the cheapest shit you got. I don't even give a fuck if it's out of the sewer. Just put it in a Trump bottle and I'll sell it as gold. And that's the entirety of the of Trump. And that's what's going on in the courtroom in New York. It's the same shit. They they got the, the, the bottom of the barrel. They scraped up the fucking sludge. And they sold it as fucking gold. And they defrauded people by selling their sludge as gold. And that's why he's in a fucking New York courtroom. That's why he's, he keeps bitching on true social. Leave my children alone. Leave your children alone. You left your children in charge of the fucking business, you dumb motherfucker. They're adults. They're fu these aren't fucking nine-year-olds. These are goddamn adults. And frankly, these are the fucking adult children that were on The Apprentice with him where he was selling them as great business people too. As if there's some sort of heritage in great business. I mean, there's heritage in fraudulent businesses. His dad was a goddamn fraud. Fred Trump was a fucking fraud. He took our money, our taxpayer dollars, and built HUD housing. And then he took our fucking taxpayer dollars from the renters that he put in the HUD housing. And he wouldn't let black people in his goddamn HUD housing. He discriminated against them. There's federal cases against Fred Trump and Donald Trump. They've been doing this for fucking decades and decades and decades. This isn't fucking new. That's why this clip is so hilarious. That even, even Sylvester Stallone tasting the water knows the fucking truth before he knows the truth. That all Trump does is scrape up toxic fucking sludge and sells it as gold. Slaps his fucking name on it as if that means anything anymore. And then tries to sell it as something elite. And it's really funny that a bunch of toothless fucking rednecks out there, a bunch of brainless sheep, believe that somehow he's one of them. These motherfuckers are always talking about how elite they are. Jesus Christ, Donald Trump stands outside that courtroom and bitches and moans and fucking complains about how his fucking mansion in South Florida on a golf course isn't being appraised high enough that it's worth gazillions of dollars. And he's not an elite? He's a blue collar billionaire. What the fuck does that mean? This guy not only not only has he been taking the state of New York's money, he's been shutting down mom and pop businesses in the state of New York for decades and decades doing the same shit, selling them toxic sludge and making it making it seem like it's Trump ice. You know, branding it as something great and putting them out of I bet I bet the water bottling plant that that fucking bottle Trump ice is out of business because of Trump. Because they did fucking business with that idiot and bottled his toxic sludge and labeled it Trump ice. It's always the same old story with this fuck. Every, every single fucking time. It's never different. Never. And again, the, the fucking brainless sheep out there, the MAGA sheep, they can't admit they're wrong. If they admit they're wrong about Trump, they have to be wrong about everything. That's how they feel. You know what I mean? Like that's that's their personality now. Their fascist personality has been come, become embodied by Trump and Manga and their worship in him and their membership into the cult. So if they admit he's wrong, they have to admit their entire worldview is wrong because it is. Their entire worldview is shit. They know it. We know it. They just can't admit it. That's why you have in the house this skirmish between Marjorie Taylor Greene and Chip Roy. Uh, well, and others. But have you seen this? Holy shit. 
She even she even went after Lauren Boebert. <laughs> oh, this is great. You know, I think we pick out really good fucking nicknames here here on the Tony Michaels podcast. Uh, one of them for Marjorie Taylor Green came from the chat, the Petty Yeti. Um, it is the inspiration uh, for the Yeti of the house. Uh, to, if you if you want to know the truth, this is where the Petty Yeti comes from. Here here she is uh, in the House of Representatives. Here, here's a picture of Marjorie Taylor Green live. Uh, the Petty Yeti, the the House Squatch, there. Uh, but again, this morning or yesterday, actually, I should say. But this morning, there's a little bit more, you know, to this story because Marjorie Taylor Green now came up in the press conference with the new Wiener of the House. And he was asked about this little skirmish here. Uh, but Chip Roy, press office, I love this. I love how, how these, these Republicans, and any politician really, if you want to say it, I, I'm good with that. Because they have official representative accounts. You see this? This is Rep. Chip Roy. This is his official account as a congressperson. That's what the gray check mark is about on, tw on, on X Chan here. I think that's what I'm going to start calling it. X Chan is great. It's Twitter or it's X Chan, one or the other. Um, but Chip Roy's official congressional account here, it's not re Representative Chip Roy. You see, it's press office. That way, if something gets tweeted out in this thing wrong, he can just blame it on his staff. He doesn't have to blame it on himself. He doesn't have to be held accountable. They don't want to be held accountable for anything anyways. But here's Chip Roy talking about the the censure uh, motion that Marjorie Taylor Greene brought to the floor and it was tabled. <laughs> uh, they can't. It's so funny. It's so funny. Republicans can't govern. Like, literally, they can't expel one of their criminal fucking uh, colleagues, George Santos. <laughs> and they can't, they can't censure a representative Tlaib uh, for her pro pro Palestinian, which appears in some instances to be pro Hamas, I'm not going to lie. Talib has gone way over the line with some of this stuff. Now, whether she should be censured in Congress, you know, that's up for, for Congress to decide. The problem is, is they decided that she shouldn't, and the reason why is because Marjorie Taylor Greene, in her language of the of the motion, called her an insurrectionist, and they were like, "Shh, ixnay on the insurrection a." <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you saying this insurrection stuff out loud? Even Chip Roy understands that you can't say this type of shit in the way that Marjorie Taylor Greene's saying it. I showed you a video during the pro-Palestinian protest, I believe it was last week, where Marjorie Taylor Greene is standing out on the Capitol, uh, on, 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 the, uh, on the steps, and she's saying, this is an insurrection, this is an insurrection, and it's a protest, not an insurrection. They weren't trying to stop official proceeding to overturn the government. They were just protesting to the government. But, you know, fucking boneheads. Um, but here, here is, um, here's, here's Chip Roy. His tweet says, uh, Representative Lee has repeatedly made outrageous remarks towards Israel and Jewish people. Her conduct is unbecoming of a member of Congress and certainly worthy of condemnation, if not censure. Um, it goes on. However, tonight's feckless resolution to censure Tlaib was... Deeply flawed. See, he's not opposed to getting rid of her. He's not opposed to fucking silencing her freedom of speech, right? This is from the freedom of speech people. I don't actually think she should be censured. I think some of the stuff she's saying is not, not good for her to say, but I don't actually think that it matters uh, to her seat of Congress, if you want to know the honest truth. That's, that's the thing. And again, I don't agree with some of the shit she's saying. I don't agree with some of that shit. But that's not, I, again, <laughs> she's not going to agree with shit I say. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Like, you know, liberty and shit. And I actually do not, I, I actually do not think that, that, that it affects her congressional seat in, in that way. I really don't. Um, because they're trying to paint her up as some sort of terrorist, terrorist sympathizer. And I don't think that's actually what she's doing. Um, but, you know, Talib's going to do what she thinks is best. And if she can't get a reelected because she says that shit, well, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, but Chip Roy goes on. He says, I voted to table the resolution. <laughs> oh, these fucking scumbags. In January 20, here we go. Listen to this. Because Marjorie Taylor Greene made this a January 6th issue, right? Now, she just didn't want to censure what Tlaib 
had said out loud, she wanted to censure her because she had participated with the protesters. At which, again, I, I believe that member, members of Congress should be able to protest as members of Congress. And I think they should be able to pro peacefully protest as members of Congress who aren't uh, acting as official members of Congress. They're acting as American citizens. So, you know, and there's a gray area there, right? And that's what you have to determine on motions on the floor of the House. But Chip Roy is really pissed off that Marjorie Taylor Greene invoked the January 6th insurrectionist. And the reason why is because when Marjorie Taylor Greene calls a pro-Palestinian protest, a peaceful pro-Palestinian protest that doesn't result in violence or, I don't know, trying to overthrow our fucking constitution, fucking bonehead, when you point out that that's an insurrection, right? When you say that's an insurrection and you're passing a motion on the floor and they're voting for a motion on the floor to call it an insurrection, because January 6th was an insurrection, you're admitting, Marjorie, Marjorie, Mar Marge, Marge, listen, listen, really clear. If you're going to say that the pro-Palestinian protests are an insurrection, like the January 6th insurrection is an insurrection, you're admitting that January 6th was an insurrection. <laughs> How the fuck don't they know this shit? I mean, Chip Roy knows it. He says, I voted to table the resolution in January 2021, the legal term insurrection was stretched and abused because he is an insurrectionist. I don't know if you know that. Chip Roy is an insurrectionist. By many following the events at the Capitol, we should not continue to perpetuate claims of insurrections at the Capitol, and we should not abuse the term now. Uh, and this is a quote by Roy because this is from his press office account. Funny part is, is Madge the Petty Yeti the house squatch, she responded. Uh, and that's what the uproar is about. That's why the, the wiener of the house was asked about this this morning and his press conference. But Marjorie Taylor Greene said, said here, you voted to kick me out of the Freedom Caucus. Oh, boy. I tell you what, there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. She's really pissed off at Chip Roy and Chip Roy hates this fucking idiot. Even as even as much of a scumbag and a dumb fuck that Chip Roy is, he even knows that this piece of shit, Marjorie Taylor Greene, is not good for their party. Even he knows it. Wow. That's wild stuff. I mean, he voted to kick her out of the Freedom Caucus. You remember that because I think this was the whole um, her and Lauren Boebert. She called Lauren Boebert a little bitch. But listen to this. <laughs> it gets good. But keep. But keep CNN wannabe Ken Buck, who, who is no longer going to run for his seat in Congress because of shit like this, right? Ken Buck's like, fuck you, I'm out. You fucking people are crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to do the crazy anymore. But the next part, oh, is so fucking delicious. And vaping, groping Lauren Boebert. This is fucking real. This is not AI. I did not make this image up. This is not a produced image. This is a real fucking tweet. This is real. Is it real or is it AI? Nope, it's real. 100%. I wish I could say that it's fake. I wish I could say that because at first I had to go verify this. I was like, sure, this isn't real because I seen it as a screenshot. I'm like, I got to go see this motherfucker. Nope, it's real. It's right there. She wrote this shit on her official account. On her rep account. This isn't her personal account. This is her official congressional account. And she calls herself a Christian on it. Christian mother American. Business owner and congresswoman. Representing Georgia's 14th district. 2.8 million bot followers. Is what she's got. But she's a Christian. And she calls Lauren Boebert. A vaping groping. Lauren Boebert. <laughs> I'm all here for it, folks. I'm not going to take the shovel out of their hand. She also goes on to tell Chip Roy, and she says a lot of ands in this thing. I'm not going to lie. And you voted with the Democrats to protect Terrius Tlaib. You hate Trump. Certified Biden's election and could care less about January 6th defendants being prosecuted, persecuted. She clearly does not understand what he's trying to tell her. He's like, hey, dummy, when you call the pro peaceful protest an insurrection,
because you don't like that they call the January 6th insurrection insurrection, you're admitting that the January 6th insurrection is an insurrection. It's real weird stuff. Totally weird, but you know, that's how it goes. And this morning, um, well, let me, let, wait a second. I got to respond to this tweet because this is a beautiful tweet, but it sucks. So this tweet sucks. This is what I do. I want to show you guys this. So like when she tweets this and I show it on the show, I go down and I, I tell her it sucks. And then I tell her it's featured on the show. <laughs> and I do it when it's a good tweet too. Like when someone's showing a clip. And I play the clip. I give them credit for it. I try to give people credit. I just want to show you guys. I don't know if you guys, some of you guys know that because some of you guys go like those comments uh, on Twitter. But I want to show you that. Um, here's here's what I said uh, to this this tweet. And then I'll show you what the, <laughs> the wiener of the house said. I said, don't put down the shovel. Please, Marge, don't put down the shovel. Please, please, please don't put down the shovel. Uh, but here is um, here's the the wiener of the house this morning talking about Talking about uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Chip Roy. Uh, here he is on Capitol Hill giving his his press conference as the wiener of the house. Let's listen to Mike Rowe Johnson, the guy who adopted a 14-year-old boy when he was a 25-year-old single man. That seems a little weird, but let's see if it's getting weirder. I was just uh, in our Republican conference meeting, and uh, there is such a great feeling of esprit de corps amongst uh, House Republicans. We're not only unified, we are energized. <laughs> so they're unified in uh, in uh, what what what? No, that's not that's that's not right. Yeah. Uh, ask him about Marjorie Taylor Greene, would you please? Ask him specifically. Let's see. Unified. Um, does that mean that you've been able to flip Thomas Massey and MTG in the last couple of days here on this Israel package, or are you moving forward with that? Well, I've had great discussions with um, Thomas and, and Marjorie, are close friends and committed conservatives, and I don't disagree with them on many issues um, and principles. They they understand the necessity of us getting our appropriations bills done and sent. <laughs> oh, they understand. They understand. So that they'll they'll create all kinds of chaos in the house. They'll create all kinds of chaos in the house. Let's let's continue with this with the wiener of the house here because he did talk about the Israeli funding this morning. Speaking of the Israeli funding and trying to get Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey and others to get their shit together. Um, of course, he doesn't have his shit together either. But let's listen. So just to follow up, uh, you stress the need to be able to pay for the Israel funding. As you know, President Biden has issued a veto threat on this bill. Would you consider putting a bill on the floor that includes funding for Israel? but does not have spending cuts, or is that a non-starter? No, listen, we, we are in dire straits as a nation. And if you talk to leaders at the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Pentagon, sometimes even in recent years under oath, they've testified before the House Armed Services Committee, where I served until um, last week. Um, if you ask them what the greatest threat is to our national security, you would expect, most people expect they'd say China, Russia, Iran, terrorism. They say it's the national debt. We have to address it. We we have. A <laughs> so people at DOD, okay, this mother, do you hear what he's trying to sell you? Do you hear the bullshit line he's trying to sell you? The people at DOD, the armed services, the fucking military. Do you have any idea how much fucking money we spend on the military? Do you have any fucking clue? Holy fuck. It's the biggest line item in our goddamn budget in this country. And this guy is claiming that the military is concerned. It's our number one national security threat is how much money the military gets. What the fuck? Because that's literally what he's doing. Literally what he's going to do is make sure that the IRS does not have the resources monetarily and, and with appropriations that, that happened in the Inflation Reduction Act to go fucking get money that the government is owed. This is not money that we're collecting or we're stealing from someone. It's money they are not paying because they're cheating on their taxes. And there's just not enough resources to go after it. And, and in this effort to spend the money to go after these fucking tax cheats, these billionaire tax cheats, is we are going to collect more money than we're going to spend. Okay? It's called an investment. Think of it that way. We're going to invest resources to the IRS to go collect taxes that billionaires have cheated on. And we're going to go get that tax dollar. And it's going to cost us pennies on the dollar. And we're talking about 
we're talking about billions of dollars in funding to the IRS to make sure they can go collect billions more in taxes from millions, millionaires and billionaires who have cheated on their taxes prior, prior taxes. They're not going to lock them up. There's a two-tier justice in, in this country. You try not paying your fucking taxes. You see how that works out for you. See if the IRS comes beating on your door, takes your fucking house, takes your shit, ruins your fucking life over, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, $20,000 worth of taxes. Oh, you'd be fucked. But millionaires and billionaires, oh, fuck the government. We have to spend our money to go get our money. That's really what we're talking about here. Because millionaires and billionaires are like, yeah, fuck, just cheat on it. There's a whole room full of lawyers because they can afford to pay millions of dollars in lawyer fees to make sure they're not spending billions of dollars in taxes. Pfft, makes sense. But here Mike Johnson wants to make sure that he extorts the Israeli funding to protect Israel. He wants to make sure of that. But let's continue. Obligations, and we have commitments, and we want to protect our, our and help and assist our friend uh, Israel, but we have to keep our own house in order as well. And I think people at home, I think the American people understand that. At home, you have to balance your budget. At home, you have to... You see how they talk to us like we're fucking children? Don't you hate that shit? Uh, the American pe- I think the I think the American people understand that. Well, we understand. We understand what you're doing. You're protecting the fucking wealthy. Because you became the Speaker of the House, and the people that you that now you owe your seat to, all those donors that are now going to stuff your pockets full of money, we know what they want. They want they want more fucking money. They want more of our money. If you want to know the honest truth, they want more of our money that's going to go towards infrastructure. They want more of our money that's going to go towards education. They want more of our money that's going to go towards health care. They want more of our money that's going to go towards national security. There you f- f- fucking dipshit. But keep going. Keep digging. Make tough decisions. And Washington should run the same way. And so we are here to change the environment, to change the paradigm, the way Washington thinks. If we continue on the trajectory we're on, it's going to hurt our country terribly. And it's going to hurt hardworking Americans even more, seniors and the rest. So we have to, while we take care of obligations, we've got to do it in a responsible manner. So I, I made this very clear to the president, myself, in our in our cordial meeting that we had. I've made it very clear to our colleagues, House Republicans. I spoke at their I mean, uh, Senate Republicans, I spoke at their luncheon yesterday. Um, I've, to every cabinet official I've spoken to all the way down the line. That- okay, this is why I'm excited about this guy being Speaker of the House. This guy's going to fail miserably. Fail. Oh, it's going to be fucking epic, folks. It's going to be an epic fucking crash. Just... <laughs> Mike Johnson imploding as he strikes the earth. This fucking guy. All right. Let me break it down another way. When Trump came to office in 2016, you remember he was saying the same shit. Oh, we're going to we're going to run the fucking government like like I run a business. Remember that shit? Mitt Romney said that shit, too. They all these fucking Republicans say that stupid fucking shit. Oh, we're going to run the country like we run a business. What the fuck are you talking about? What business do you know runs like a government? Huh? What are you talking about? What business runs that you know of like a government? It doesn't. It, that's not how it works. That's not how governments work. That's not how governing works. Number one. That's why this, this fucking run it as a business is always a fallacy in the first place. And then when he when he when he fucking talks down to the American people talking about how they're gonna run the fucking country like we run our households, hey, fuck you, buddy. You're the you're the one you're the one sucking at the tea to corporations and making sure labor like UAW isn't getting the deals that they deserve from the big three. You fucking pieces of shit, Mike Johnson. You fuck. Yeah, run run the country like our household. Good fucking luck with that, bitch. This motherfucker has never, probably never felt the plight of an average working American ever. Look at him. Look at this son of a bitch. So don't don't even start with that shit. But the problem is, 
is this same old worldview that they're going to run the country like a business like they did in 2016 under Trump. You remember how that worked out? Eight trillion dollars in four years in deficits. Because, folks, what Mike Johnson and Republicans are, are selling is that, oh, we're going to pay for the Israeli funding. In reality, they're going to put it on the credit card because they're taking away money that we use to go collect the money that we're owed from rich people. That's right. So it's going to cost us more money. They're literally making it to where the Israeli funding is all deficit spending, not just the fucking funding in the first place, which we could just run up the de deficit for that spending. We could just put it on the credit card, as they say. It doesn't fucking matter. It's the federal government. We have the Federal Reserve. I don't think people really quite understand that. We're not on the gold standard anymore, you dumb sons of bitches. It's not a thing. And we're not going back to it either. There's not enough fucking gold. You don't get it. You need to, again, rub a few brain cells together. Do a little bit of fucking research. Do your own research. Not on Facebook. On somewhere else that, you know, makes sense. But Mike Johnson here is selling bullshit to his fucking sheep. He's not talking to us. He's not talking to us. Average Americans that are like, wait a second. So you're going to take a money away from the IRS that is used to go collect taxes that, that millionaires and billionaires try to cheat us out of? And you're saying that that's going to cost us less money? They're going to run up more deficit. And the motherfuckers are, the, the sheep are so fucking blind and they're not going to change their mind so much that Mike Johnson just says it outright. Uh, here he is running away from reporters in a hallway. Uh, this was this was yesterday uh, when he was being questioned about the CBO score. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what the CBO is. It's the Congressional Budget Office. So what the Congressional Budget Office does is anything the House does, they see how much it's going to run up the deficit of our country. The credit card, as it were, that these Republicans like to talk about. They're going to, they score to see how much credit card debt our country is going to have. And when they scored Mike Johnson's plan to pay for Israeli funding with, with this IRS money, it's moving the money, which means that the IRS now does not have this funding. They're like, whoa, that's going to cause, they're going to have less money to collect more money. So then we're going to have more debt. Because we're going to collect less revenue. That's what the Internal Revenue Service does, is collects revenue. But apparently Mike Johnson does not understand that. Let's listen. If he even knows what the CBO is or what they do. They be careful, everybody. Be careful. Were you surprised by the CBO score, sir? Not surprised at all. Only in Washington when you cut spending do they call it a... Are you alarmed by the CBO score? Only in Washington uh, do, do they call it when you reduce spending uh, and that it increases deficit. Well, when that spending is supposed to go to collecting more money, yeah, it, it does. And this is the fucking boneheaded thinking. This is the boneheaded thinking that they have. And I'm I, I honestly watching this clip. Again, this is why I'm excited about this guy, because I actually think this guy is so fucking dumb. He's so dumb that he, he's so dumb that he thinks we're so dumb that we can't see that this guy adopted a 14 year old boy when he was a 25 year old single man, that there's something wrong with that. He, he thinks he's so dumb that he thinks we're so dumb. That we can't understand that his wife's little conversion therapy thing when she tried to scrub her website of demonizing LGBTQ and uh, cute community members call calling a bestiality and shit that we know that you're a fucking Nazi friend. We know you're a white Christian nationalist. We know you're a neo-Nazi. We know what you are. You piece of shit. We're not that fucking dumb. He thinks we are, but we're not, but this guy is dumb enough to believe this shit. He just said, listen, be careful. Everybody be careful. Try. Were you surprised by the CBO score, sir? Not surprised at all. Only in Washington when you cut spending do they call it a Are you alarmed an by increase the in the deficit. Because <laughs> that's not what a deficit is. A deficit is not how much, how much, how much you spend or how much you don't spend. It's how much money revenue you get versus how much you spend. That's where the deficit happens. This, honestly, if we're going to run the fucking country like you run a business, maybe you should know how to run a fucking business then, Mike Johnson.
Maybe that's what the fuck you should do. I mean, it didn't help that Donald Trump and Eric Trump, or Do Donald Trump Jr. went to the business school at Wharton. They don't know fucking shit about accounting. But apparently Mike Johnson doesn't know a goddamn thing either. That you have to have income, and then you have, then you have debts, right? Income and outcome. <laughs> Americans who have a kitchen table know that. They go to their fucking job and they earn their fucking paycheck. They come home and they got to write out the bills with the money they have incoming, the revenue. That's how they make money. With the money that goes out to their bills, the money that they fucking owe. And then, and then if they have a deficit, meaning they don't have enough money to pay their fucking bills, maybe they put a few on credit cards, that's their deficit, Mike. How the fuck does this guy expect us to believe that he thinks he's going to run the fucking country like a business and this guy doesn't even know gap? Doesn't even know what revenue is. That that revenue versus bills. And he's lecturing us. Don't you see how I'm excited about this guy? Oh my God, this guy is going to fucking crash and burn. And we're going to make sure of it. The messaging is going to be there. This guy is going to provide every single piece of the narrative that we need. Every single fucking piece of the narrative that we need to show the country why he should not be Speaker of the House. Every single fucking last little nugget that we need, he's going to provide it. And I know that sucks. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Oh, I, I guess Rat had a new, a new song there, huh? <laughs> Here, let me put this one on mute, uh, and you can uh, you can play that one over this. Uh, here, here's here's uh, here's a uh, small micro energy. Small Wayner Energy, Micro Johnson. That's a catchy tune. <laughs> That's a catchy tune. Thanks, Rant. Thanks for the tune. I'm sure the audience is going to enjoy all these little tunes that we've got. Uh, eventually we'll be able to do all kinds of creative shit and you won't even see it coming. Uh, so thank, thank you, Rand. Thank you. And the audience appreciates you. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I, I, sorry, I, I can't, I got to do it one more time. I got to do it one more time. It's, it's good. Small Wainer energy, micro Johnson. Small Wayner Energy, Micro Johnson. All right, all right, all right. That's, that's, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Small Energy, Micro Johnson. Well, I wish I wish I had a better a better way to go to a break, but I can't. I can't, I can't beat that. I can't beat that. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Small Energy from Micro Johnson and the Republicans in the Senate, the House, and in courts all around the country, criminal and civil. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. What the fuck is wrong with you people? It's a rhetorical question at best. We'll be right back on the Tony Michaels Podcast. Letters from the Trucker Convoy. Dears Tammy, by the time we reach D.C., we was 50 strong in number. Some patriots ran out of gas along the way. We got plenty of Slim Jims and Skull. Near run out of Natty Light. Hope it don't rain tomorrow so we can circle the city again. Here's Bob. Dear Bob, I'm fixing to send you some more of them Doritos you like. The red bag, not the live loving blue one. In your absence, I discovered a rash on my neck, and no, it ain't no hickey, and I ain't even seen my cousin Brody in ages. Stay strong. Wipe your ass at least once a day. Yours, Tammy. Fuck em. Fuck em. Fuck em. Fuck em. Fuck em. Fuck em. We're back to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for sticking around through the break. 
need a little sip of water there. Why not end it on that note with that great foot tapping song about Micro Johnson? Little Wiener Energy from Micro Johnson. Well, we got we got shovel energy uh, from the Petty Yeti. Here is an image of the Petty Yeti not putting down her shovel uh, in the House of Representatives. Please, Madge, do not put down your shovel. I'm telling you what, this AI is spot on, isn't it? Fuck, this looks just like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Holy shit, is this real or is this AI, rat? I'm not gonna lie this is really fucking close ain't it i mean this is this is almost i mean i can't even tell the difference really can you i think this is real i seriously think this is real oh wait a second wait a second it's hard to see her feet so this it may this may be ai i may be way off my rocker here we can't see we can't see the petty yeti's feet so it could it could be that she's got way more than this. This Yeti's got more than three toes. Uh, but this is where this is where the Petty Yeti hangs out on X Chan. Uh, I'm I think I'm gonna officially name Twitter X Chan. Here's X Chan here. Although this is a little, this is a little too nice to be X Chan. There's not enough dumpster fires here. Are you sure, Rat? Are you sure that this is that this is X Chan? Are we sure about this? Are we sure? I don't know, man. X Chan seems like it have a lot more dumpster fires. Be like a hellscape, you know what I mean? Bunch of Nazis running around, bunch of anti Semites everywhere in your comments. All the trolls, just like zombie trolls everywhere, right? Kind of like, um, you know, Halloween just happened, so it'd be like, uh, you know, Thriller, the Michael Jackson, you know, musical, you know what I mean? Just the zombies roaming the streets. I don't know, I don't know, and I don't think this one's real, right? I think. I think you're getting your images mixed up here. What do you think? Do you think this is real, Rat? Do you think this is? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. All right. Well, go back, go back in the lab and see if you can find um, a, 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 an image to back it up. If this is X, X Chan. Oh boy. Let's see if we got any more images from the courtroom. Uh, there actually, you know what, you know what, just in, just in, there is an image that I have of George Santos. George Santos, uh, is being welcomed back to the house of representatives. Here's George Santos. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this image. You know, this is real when he's got the, uh, the little fleece vest underneath his suit jacket. Uh, and then look at all the, the Republican pirates here. Look at all these fascist pirates excited that George Santos, the thief, the indicted criminal, is back in the house. That's right. They made this big theatric, big theatrics about George Soros, or George Santos, excuse me. Say George Soros? Yeah, whatever. George Santos uh, being expelled. The Republicans brought the motion to the floor. And they didn't get it. Yeah, that's right. They couldn't they couldn't get rid of the the number one Hall of Fame liar in the house, which makes him, you know, really honestly, makes him prime to be uh, the the leader of the house. Here here is um uh, Chris Webb has it here. Uh here's the uh, here's the actual vote uh, for it. So nay was 214. Couldn't even fucking, couldn't even get a simple majority. Now, you need two-thirds vote in the House is what you need. You need two-thirds vote in the House to expel a member of Congress. It's not just a simple majority, but they couldn't even get a simple majority here to expel him. Holy shit. Holy shit. And really, honestly, the, the Democrats didn't make it easy on them, which they shouldn't. They shouldn't. The Democrats shouldn't fucking just they, they, they uh, listen. I've been telling you this since the, we found out who or we didn't know who George Santos was or Anthony DeVolder or whatever the hell his name is. Her name is. I don't know. When we found out who we didn't know who George Santos was, I said he shouldn't resign and we shouldn't want him to resign. 
We should want Republicans to have to live with him. And they are. Uh, George Santos, I think, even gave a, I think he even gave an interview. Um, they couldn't even get rid of him, but he gave an interview. Let me see if I can, I can find it here. Yeah, so this is, um, here is Santos running away from reporters in the hallway as he's responding uh, to the expulsion vote. Oh, wait, this is, that's a different one. That's a different one. He's bitching about something else. That's, uh, <laughs> uh let's see. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Here's, uh, here's a little bit of uh, George Santos. He's always in the hallways running away from people. Let's watch it. Mr. Santos, do you intend to serve both years of your term? Do you plan to vote for Leader McCarthy's state speaker? Tell us if you plan to serve both years of your term. Oh, well, that's that's him. That's him bullshitting, too. Oh. <laughs> is there, is there, is there one that we can watch <laughs> that is George Santos? Um <laughs> Well, let's see if we can find. I listened to him say it this morning. I'm just trying to find the one of him walking in the hallway being questioned by reporters. Actually, you know what? Here's a good one. Here's Daniel Goldman um, absolutely slamming Republicans um, for for George Santos. Let's watch that. Recognized. One of my colleagues says, we will hold members accountable. You are the party of George Santos. Who are you holding accountable? The guy is an alleged and acknowledged liar and indicted, and you protect him every day. Don't lecture us with your projection and your defense of Donald Trump. It's pathetic, and it's beneath you, and it's beneath this body, and I yield back. Recognized. One of my colleagues said— And there's, and there's Daniel Goldman. And, and again, I, I, you know, George Santos is the shovel that— Dan, is the shovel that the Republicans are holding. Here's actually a, a, a clip here of George Santos yielding the floor to Goldman uh, as he held the House floor. Watch this. New York, Mr. Santos is recognized. Members are reminded to refrain from engaging in personalities toward the president. Mr. Chair, uh, I yield five minutes to my colleague from New York, Mr. Goldman. Thank you very much, Mr. Santos. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of this resolution to expel George Santos from Congress as I did in May when I co-sponsored a similar expulsion <laughs> resolution that the sponsors of today's resolution, my colleagues from, uh, my Republican colleagues from New York, did not support. I agree with everything that my Republican colleagues have said here today, but everything they have said here today was also true in May when they voted to protect George Santos. Has there been anything that has changed? Nothing about the numerous lies that Mr. Santos admitted himself to making in order to deceive his voters into electing him. Nothing about his status as an indicted criminal defendant. Yes, there has been a superseding indictment with more allegations of criminal conduct, but he is still presumed innocent until proven guilty as my New York friends relied upon in May when they voted to protect George Santos from expulsion. Nothing has changed from the Ethics Committee, even though one of my colleagues from New York said that the Ethics Committee would expedite its investigation and release a report 60 days from the date of that May vote. Well, we are now 175 days since then, and there is no ethics report that would prompt a change of heart. One thing that has changed is that Mr. Santos's campaign treasurer pled guilty to fraud and admitted under oath that she conspired with Mr. Santos to fabricate a non-existent $500,000 loan to his campaign. But the resolution drafted by my friends from New York does not even mention that new fact. So here's the thing. And a lot of people were confused by this. They're like, why did Democrats vote not to expel George Santos? Because, folks, because George Santos is a Republican and they deserve him. They deserve him. So I'm glad the Repu there's Democrats in the House that didn't vote to expel him. Fuck, fuck that shit. F let them fucking live with him. Just what Daniel Goldman said here. I can't even believe that they can't. They didn't even put the new superseding indictment in the resolution. 
The one thing that has changed since people have been calling for him to be expelled, the one thing that has changed, they didn't even put it in the motion to expel him, which means that Republicans knew this entire time, the whole time that George Santos should have been expelled from Congress. So why should Democrats do the fucking bidding of Republicans? Why do Democrats have to fucking elect their leaders? Why do Democrats have to expel their fucking criminal members? Why do we have to do that shit? Fuck you. Take care of your own. Do your shit. Clean your fucking house. Okay? Clean your fucking house over there, and then we can do some business together. So good. I'm glad there's fucking Democrats that voted to keep George Santos tied around the necks of Republicans to make them have to fucking own that piece of lying shit. Fuck them. Fuck them. Again, folks, we're in it to win it. And there ain't there ain't no winning if we don't if we don't win next year. That's right. They control the fucking House caucus. They pick their guy, Micro Johnson. They got the petty yeti with her shovel and her backhoe. Good. Keep going. Keep doing it. And there ain't a goddamn thing we can do about it. This is this is why we have to get our asses out and we have to engage in democracy. Because it ain't just this next election that matters. It's every fucking one of them matter. They all matter. Until we can get the American people to really realize that, hey, I know you got a busy life, but you really got to pay attention a little bit to this stuff. Just a fucking little bit. And really, honestly, listening to your your fucking Uncle Fred on Facebook is not the place you need to figure out who you're going to vote for. Jesus fucking Christ. That's what led us to this fucking mess in the first place. Pluck your head out of your ass for a half second, and that's where you engage. You have to engage the country. You, that's what I mean by it, right? We got to get these people to wake the fuck up and realize that, oh, oh, that's why people keep saying don't vote for Republicans. They want to take our fucking liberty. They want to give all the money to a few of their fucking donors. And all the while they can't govern. It's by design, folks. This shit is by design. Do you really believe that Mike Johnson believes that if he takes IRS funding, that it won't add to the deficit? That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard of in my life. If Mike Johnson is smart enough to be the Speaker of the House, then he should be smart enough to realize that if you take funding that he's going to take from the IRS, that the deficit's going to go up. And they always know that. Republicans have always known this shit. They always have hid their fascism behind a thin veil of conservatism. Oh, we want to we we want to be conscious of our national debt. Oh, really? Where were you during 2016 to 2020? When Trump was in office and the de- and the national deficit went eight trillion dollars, the same amount in eight years under Obama that you guys fucking act like it was the end of the world. And it wasn't the eight, the eight trillion dollars worth of debt Barack Obama put on our country wasn't the end of the world. And the reason why it wasn't is because the eight trillion dollars that Trump put on our debt wasn't the end of the world, still isn't. Still isn't the end of the world. Or the end of the country. And it's not the number one national security threat. The one, number one national security threat that we have in our country is domestic terrorism. And we got guns just pouring out on our fucking streets. Weapons of war. That's the number one threat to Americans here in our country. You fucking boneheads. Not the debt. Get the fuck out of here. What, how many people, how many mass, how many mass fucking financial debtaries have you seen? Huh? How many people would die because the national debt went into an elementary school and mowed down a bunch of children with dollar dollar bills, y'all? Really? That's the number one threat? Fuck out of here with that bullshit. You can't even you can't even muster up enough courage to support the American working class and 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 be happy that the UAW did the deal with the big three. And got auto manufacturers back on an even keel with their workers. That's called the good economy. That's called a good market is what that's called. And that's only good for everyone in the country, by the way. So give me a fucking break. When they're when 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 we're going to we're going to act like it should be the Democrats that say the Republicans from George Santos. Fuck you. 
I want George Santos in court and not giving up his fucking seat next year during the election. And the Republicans have to sit and defend that fucking piece of shit. Fuck them. Let them have to defend that son of a bitch, just like they're defending Donald Trump in his criminal and civil trials. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. It's about goddamn time that we let them touch the fucking hot stove. For years and years and decades and decades, us, the pro-democracy coalition, in the interest of our country and the and the long-term ability for us to govern in this country, we have we have let them fucking run amok and dive deeper and deeper and deeper into fascism without saying a goddamn word and acting like acting like they're not fascist. Jesus Christ, people run around acting like Liz Cheney is a goddamn hero. I will ne- listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. I will never ever 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 call Liz Cheney an American hero. Ever. Won't have fucking happen. That fucking scumbag wants to take health care rights away from women. She believes that the Democrats want to make it to where women can kill their babies after they're born. Stupid shit like that. Using using lies and cudgels like that to take away women's right to health care. That alone, just that one point is enough for me to never consider her ever an American hero. She did the bare fucking minimum. And frankly, she didn't even do the bare fucking minimum. She didn't, she didn't do the bare minimum. She waited 190 days. Go do the count. I counted it. 190 days it took her to go to the floor and to put in an official record that Donald Trump had lost. 190 days. Mark it down. Go tell everyone on Facebook or on Twitter, X-Chan, on threads, whatever social media your site you're on because it's true. She ain't no fucking hero. She ain't no better than George Santos. Fuck that shit. You think Kevin McCarthy or Mike Johnson, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, Matt Gantz, Chip Roy, Paul Gozar, these fucking scumbags, you think that you think they're any different than George Santos? They're fucking lying sex of shit. They aren't who they say they are. Mike Johnson claims to be this great Christian person. He was he was weirdly when he was 25 and a single man, he was adopting 14-year-old boys, folks. What in the fuck does a 25-year-old single man want to adopt a 14-year-old adopt? Because he didn't officially adopt him. Weird stuff. Somehow that's Christian. Come on, man. Somehow because Liz Cheney did the bare minimum and she joined the January 6th select committee and was willing to say the truth out loud. (gasps) Oh, well, fuck me. She's willing to say the truth out loud. We'll make her an American hero then. Fuck that shit. Her and Adam Kinzinger, too. I showed you a clip the other day of Adam Kinzinger saying, I'm not going to not call myself a Republican, even though I vote for Democrats, even though I don't believe in the Republican Party, even though the Republican Party is dead. Get the fuck out of here. It's a sickness that we have in this country. It's an affiliation sickness. And you know what? You know what? Fuck them. If they want to willingly have the disease and walk around being fucking just fascist zombies, fine. Fine. Let's at least be able to fucking point them out to everybody. And show the fucking country why you should be paying attention and why you should pluck your head out of your ass and understand that there are people in this country who who are for democracy and there are Republicans who are for autocracy. That's your choices. And I know it's it's a bleak choice. And TYT watchers are going to get all upset. Well, we should have more choices. <laughs> we should have more choices, Tony. What the fuck are you talking about? More choices on what? Why in the fuck do we need more choices than autocracy or democracy? It's a pretty easy one. Pretty fucking easy one to pick. I don't know about you. 
So let them have George Santos. Let them be held accountable for having George Santos. Good for them. They deserve him. Every fucking day of the week, just like they deserve Tommy Tuberville. Same fucking thing. Same motherfucker. Same fucking shit. They deserve that son of a bitch. They made this fucking bed. They should sleep in it, Tommy Tuberville. Even Lindsey Graham's pissed off at him. Here, here's a little, here's a little clip from the Senate. Because Tommy Tuberville held up all uh, almost 400 promotions in DOD, which is standard operating Senate procedure, where the DOD presents their, their promotions and the Senate votes on them as a blanket, trusting the DOD with their promotions. But Tommy Tuberville doesn't want women in the military because that's really what he's saying. That's really what he's saying. Tommy Tuberville has been holding up military promotions, blocking them in the Senate. Because he doesn't want, he doesn't want a woman to drive across the state line to receive medical attention. He, she doesn't want her going to the doctor. Tommy Tuberville just doesn't like when them women folk go to the doctor. And frankly, if that means they shouldn't be in the military, then Tommy Tuberville probably thinks that's a good thing too. It's truly what they want. That's what they mean when the military's woke. They mean women's in the military. That's what it means. That's what it means to the toxic, the toxic masculinity masquerading out there. These fucking fake ass incels thinking they're tough guys like Tommy Tuberville here. Even Lindsey Graham, even Lady G knows he's not a tough guy. Listen to this. It's about keeping politics, politics out of the military. I did not put it in the military. Joe Biden and Secretary Austin put politics in the military. And it's about the right to life. So the which is it? Is it about politics or is it about you don't want women in the military? Because it feels like to me that I don't know everything's about politics when it, uh, I don't know, it comes to the floor of a political body like the Senate. Of course, it's fucking pol How the fuck? What in the fuck? Don't how? God damn it. It's politics, folks. It's on the floor of the Senate. We elect these people as politicians to represent us in our republic. Jesus fucking Christ. To go make decisions as politicians. Using politics. God damn. It's, it's exhausting that, that the sheep don't know this. These are some of the most important things in the world to me. And so, Mr. President, I object. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from South Carolina. Yeah, I'll have another one. Uh, let me respond to my co <coughs> colleague respectfully. And we have court. Actually, uh, Lady G, you should do it not respectfully. You should really, I mean, honestly, this respect thing is not getting us very far. When you're doing this shit where you're, you're being respectful to Tommy Tuberville, See, that, that's the kind of discourse that I think that we should rebut. Enough of that shit. Enough of fucking playing, playing coy with Tommy too. Enough of giving him what he fucking wants. Fuck that guy. Fuck him and fuck any scumbag that's, that's funding him. Because someone is paying. Someone is paying Tommy Tuberville to do this. Tommy Tuberville would not have the intuition or nor the willpower to continue this shit if there wasn't money behind it no way neither would republicans because watch lady g here watch him watch her him what whatever and we have courts if you think they've done something illegal go to court that's how you handle these things the Pentagon has issued a legal opinion I disagree with saying this doesn't violate the Hyde Amendment. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. All of us are ready to promote her because she deserves to be promoted. She had nothing to do with this policy. Let me say it again. Everybody in this body could find an issue with any administration they don't agree with. And what we're going to do is open up Pandora's box. Today is abortion policy. 
If we take back the White House, we'll go back to the Mexico City policy, limiting dollars to be given to overseas entities that are engaged in the abortion business. Some pro-choice people don't like that. What would happen if they put a hold on all the officers because they don't agree with the Republican administration? There's a reason this, is, this has not been done this way for a couple hundred years. No matter where you believe it or not, Senator Turbeville, this is doing great damage to our military. I don't say that lightly. I've been trying to work with you for nine months. Okay, so Lindsey Graham, obviously, he understands it, but he didn't get to the point. Let me show you the point here, uh, wh where he gets to right about. Actually, you know what? I want to show you something else here. I know this seems a little. If you another. This seems a little petty, but if you look in the background here, is that? Is that Kirsten Cinema walking in the background? Can someone confirm that for me? <laughs> I'm just saying, I can't see anything but her skirt and her boots, but I think that's Kirsten Cinema in the background there, probably. Okay, so here's the point where Lindsey Graham he makes the point, but he doesn't get it, which is is not surprising. It's not surprising that they don't fucking get it. the The point is the reason why Tommy Tuberville is stopping this nomination isn't because of abortion. It isn't because of wokeness. It isn't because of Joe, Joe, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. It's not because of that. Let me give you a little fucking hint. Lindsey Graham says it out loud. Let me give you a little hint. He says it out loud here. Listen. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. You just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. It ain't got nothing to do with abortion. It ain't got fucking nothing to do with wokeness. Tommy Tuberville's goal is to make sure that there are not women in the military. I told you that months ago when he was doing this. Months ago. Because the thinking is, well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Tommy, Tommy says, well, here's the deal. I tell you what, we just don't have women in the military, and then we don't have to do any of this stuff about abortion. We don't have to do anything about abortion. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are no women in the military. We don't have to give them health care at all. See? See, that's what we don't have to do. We don't have to give women anything in this country. They shouldn't have the right to vote. They shouldn't have the right to travel in, in, in Lubbock, Texas, or Texas in general. They shouldn't be able to go to the doctor's point unless me, Tommy Tuberville, says that you can go to the fucking doctor the way that I want you to go to the doctor. I mean, if I get you pregnant, if me, Tommy Tuberville, gets you pregnant, then I want you to go to the doctor and get an abortion. But if you're going to go get an abortion for someone else other than Tommy Tuberville, I don't want you to have it, okay? You see, I don't want women in the military. That's what the fuck it's been about the whole goddamn time. The whole goddamn time. When any fucking some misogynic piece of shit, some macho man, who yeah, macho man. When any macho man who hasn't been in the military like Tommy Duerville is talking to you about how the military's less manly, He's not saying it that way, but it's less manly. He fucking means that he does not want women in the military. That's what he means by wokeness. Listen to it a fucking again. Listen to it. Here's fucking Lindsey Graham. Listen to what she says again. Lady G will tell you he doesn't, she doesn't get it. He doesn't get it, whatever. But he says it out loud. Listen. Saying this doesn't violate the Hyde Amendment. I disagree with it. Here's what's going to happen. You've just denied this lady a promotion. You did that. All of us are ready to promote her because she deserves to be promoted. She had nothing to do with this policy. There you go. She had nothing to do with this policy. Nothing to do with this policy. But she's got a giner. She's got one of them lady parts. They're always focused. Oh, God, they're fucking hyper-focused on what gender and who's what and what's a woman. What's a woman? She's qualified to be in this position. DOD has said she's qualified. The Senate overwhelmingly, 
wants to individually promote her, which they do not do normally. Normally, it's a blanket promotion. They do all these promotions with one vote because they trust DOD to make these promotions inside their military ranks. Tommy Tuberville, and I've said it for months and months and months that this is not about abortion. It's not about wokeness in the military. They do not want women in the military. And if we could find, I almost bet if you could find a big funding apparatus out there in the right wing that is hyper-focused on women not being in the military. And really, honestly, you could probably start at women's health care, like them taking away women's health care, Roe v. Wade, absolutely stripping Roe v. Wade, and also paired with women not taking away the rights of women to vote. I almost bet you'd find exactly who the fuck is paying Tommy Tuberville to do this. I almost bet, you, bo bottom dollar, you could find exactly who the fuck is funding Tommy Tuberville to do this, who is pushing him to do this. Same fucking people who use abortion as a cudgel, the same fucking people who convince their fucking sheep that abortion is the only issue you vote on, the same fucking people who, who convince white, fragile men that there's no such thing as privilege and that this isn't a democracy, it's a republic. Same motherfuckers. Same motherfuckers. And here Lindsey Graham is walking smack dab into why Tommy Tuberville does not want to do this. Why he doesn't want this woman to be promoted in the military. And he, st he still can't get the shit out of his brains to realize what's going on. Because if he did, he'd call it out right there on the Senate floor. Uh, Tony Phillips makes a pretty good point. Probably Harlan Hitler. Hmm. Could be. Could be Harlan Hitler. That's paying Tommy Tuberville to do this. I don't know how many times Tommy Tuberville has went down and sat and had a reading out of the signed copy of Mein Kampf with Harlan Hitler, but I'm sure it's been more than once. What a fucking scumbag Tommy Tuberville is. And it ain't just about our national security, folks. You, sh I mean, you should be really pissed off, especially if you're a veteran, if you've served this fucking country, or if you have family members that have served this country, or if you've lost family members that have served this fucking country. For Tommy Tuberville, some fucking podunk, goddamn Florida man who is a senator in Alabama, he's a goddamn carpetbagger is standing in the way of the DOD, DOD promoting our national security apparatus to their post to make sure that our national security isn't at risk. You should be fucking livid about that. But the fact that all this is about that Tommy Tuberville wants to create the narrative because that's what they're doing, motherfuckers. That's what they're doing. They're planting the seeds of narrative. That's what Tommy Tuberville's doing. That's what probably Harlan Hitler is funding here. I bet those fucking scumbags, those Nazi scumbags, have been down in Texas in his goddamn Hitler library, sitting around, drinking cognac, fucking reading from the signed copy of Mein Kampf, talking about how all... Oh, they can get the narrative going in this country. They can get the real, the internet white incel bros to really spark up the narrative that women shouldn't be in the military. That would solve Tommy Tuberville's problem. What do you think this is? It's an attack on women, folks. It, and it's just not the attack on women about their health care rights. It's not just about that. That's what they want it to appear to be. They want you to think that it's about abortion. And it's about fucking Handmaid's Tale type shit. The same bullshit that they do with trans kids in this country. Same fucking shit. They use them as a cudgel, as a national narrative. To take away parental consent away from children. That's right. It ain't just going to stop at trans kids taking away parental consent. They're coming after your fucking consent too. 
They'll do it. And they do it by shaping narratives and forcing fucking politicians like Republicans who are soulless, soulless pricks that have their fucking grasp on our governments. Our governments. It's ours. We the people. We are the fucking government. It's to create the narrative because they know if they can create enough of a narrative to scare these politicians into thinking that they won't get reelected unless they start saying shit like women shouldn't be in the fucking military. Where do you think it ends? They don't want women to have the right to health care. They don't want women to have the right to fucking drive to a goddamn doctor's appointment. Now. They, they're not going to want women in the military. They're not going to want women in certain jobs. They're not going to want women to vote. What do you think this is? How do you think fascism works? <laughs> it ain't about abortion. He's so fucking full of shit. And when we when we fight this on the ground of abortion, we lose. Because their win isn't rather Tommy Tuberville stops these nominations. Harlan Hitler, if he is the funder of this, he doesn't give a fuck if the Senate finally passes these promotions. He doesn't give a shit. What he cares about is that the national, the narrative sticks that women shouldn't be in the military. See, let me show you an example. Let me show you Shaz, the general of the Shart Army. Here he is. Here he is, folks. Here he fucking is. Why are women in our military? We must revisit our core American values. See? Hey, Shaz, I hate, to, I hate to disappoint you, friend, but the core American values that you're referring to, you wouldn't last five fucking minutes, my friend. They'd string you up, buddy. Because they, they would know who you are. They'd smoke you out. Oh, my God. That closet would open up. You'd be so fucked. You have no idea. The The cute thing is, though, Shaz, the cute thing is, is the fascist have convinced you that, that you're one of them. Because you get all butthurt online about women. So you hate on women. And you hate on the gay community. You fucking bigot. And, and they've made you think. They've made you think. They've duped you into believing that all you got to do is be bigoted and you'll be one of them. That ain't where fascism stops, buddy. Because I'm for your right to be a bigoted little piece of shit in my comments. I don't know if anyone knows this. I haven't, I haven't booted Chez. He hasn't said he hasn't said enough vile shit for me to boot him yet. As soon as he does, you know, I'll open his fucking I'll open the door for him with his head and he'll be exited promptly. But as far as I'm concerned, Chaz here still has hope. If he's not a bot. That's right. One day, maybe Shaz will wake up and realize he's been lied to by the fascist. That they, the fascist, want to make sure Shaz helps them take the rights away from other people and oppress other people's rights. That way, one day, there's no one there to protect them when they come after Shaz. That's the fucking truth. That's what all this shit about Tommy Tuberville is about. It ain't about no fucking abortion. It ain't about no crossing state lines or federal funding. They don't give a fuck about that, Chaz. They don't give a fuck about that. They want to make women second-class citizens so they can make people like you second-class citizens, you dumb son of a bitch. And you don't even know it. That's the fucking weird part. Is that you come here every day, listen to this shit, and you still ain't got enough brain cells to rub together to realize that you pushing to oppress the rights of other people only, only gives the fascist ability to oppress your rights. This machine kills fascist. The microphone, the speech. But you got to aim it in a certain way. And we do here on the Tony Michaels podcast. 
And this audience engages. Like crazy, it engages. Every single day, Monday through Friday. Two full fucking hours here. On YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. And I promise you. I promise you. That I will never, ever, ever not point out. What someone, what a scumbag like Tommy Tuberville is trying to do to our country. And I'm not just talking about the, the lies that he tells about abortion. I'm talking about his overall goal. His goal is to plant the seeds of narrative in, in dumb fucks like Shaz's mind to convince them that women are second class citizens. Because they believe, the fascists believe, if they can convince enough people of that, then they can get them to commit atrocities. You just fucking hide and watch. Or come here every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Gabe Sanchez does not have a show today. I know some people are asking. Gabe Sanchez does not have a show today. Apparently, he's having technical difficulties. Um, so I don't know if he'll have a show later on. So pay attention to Gabe's channel. But he's we're not going to be throwing to Gabe uh, today because he doesn't have anything to throw to because he has technical difficulties. But you should stay in the fight of fascism just like I'm going to every single weekday. Visit thetonymichaels.com. Go get you some This Machine Kills Fascist merch, the Tony Michaels podcast official tattoo merch collection. That's right. I'm going to get this design an inspiration of this design on my arm tattooed in January. So go get your tattoo merch now. And by the way, if you order tattoo merch or the even my dog hates Ted Cruz merch, the even my dog hates Ted Cruz merch, it is on its way. That's right. The first orders have been shipped and you guys can wear it when you come to your first book club meeting. That's right. We got a book club with the fucking fam. Now go to the Tony Michaels.com pan on down. You can click the book club link it'll take you straight to discord where the book club their first book they're going to read is the obstacle is the way by ryan holiday they're also going to be listening to the audio version of rachel Maddow's book and having discussions live in discord i know if you don't like discord uh you might not want to do the other discord stuff but i'm telling you you really you really should go to the tony michaels.com and you should you should go to the books the book club uh paying all the way down to memberships the book club is right here check out the book club it's going to be wonderful uh, there's going to be audio uh discussions so you're not even some of these books you're not even going to buy and you're not going to buy to be part of the book club and have the discussion at least hear what the book's about and what people think about it um, and there's some opportunities to get like a free trial and actually read some of these books for free. It won't cost you a single thing. And it doesn't cost you a single thing to be a member of the book club. So get in on it. I appreciate every single one of you as I do. I appreciate the mods. I appreciate everyone who contributes to this show. And I even appreciate Shaz. That's right. Shaz, man, the more you show up, the more I have hope for you. Really, honestly, I think he is. I, th I think there's hope for Shaz and the Shark Army still. I'm not going to give up hope on them. They're Americans just like we are. Well, I mean, they need a few more brain cells to rub together. Maybe we'll give it to them every single weekday, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 Pacific, until tomorrow, same time, same place. Surf's up, motherfuckers. You've been listening to the Tony Michaels Podcast. Podcast. In your face commentary of current events and political news. No rules, no boundaries. I think we've made that perfectly clear. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll be back soon. In the meantime, follow Tony on social media at the Tony Michaels. And until next time, raise a fist and repeat after me. Fuck them. Murphy's Mealborn, head ass speaking. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson.
Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson.